everybody and welcome back to the channel i hope you're all having a wonderful week um i hope you all took full advantage of pre-orders this week because on the 3rd of august we have war cry coming out and if you can't tell i am excited about it and probably going to be dedicated a few videos on the build up to the release of war cry unfortunately there's not going to be any unboxings between now and then there's not going to be showcase of any models there's not going to be major discussions about rules because unlike your favorite youtube channels yours truly doesn't get an early copy doesn't matter i don't mind waiting just build the excitement more so without further ado let's uh, sit back grab a cup of tea and let's discuss how to get started with Warcry. Right then guys, first up, GW have told us now there's three ways to play the game, even though it's a skirmish box game. We've got our open play, we've got our narrative play, and we've got our match play. The interesting thing about this, um, GW have done the match play, and have also said it's going to be like tournament friendly, so I don't know whether this is going to be something that they're going to host in the near future, or they're expecting um, to have a big impact in the scene and you know there's going to be tournament in your local gaming group so i know it seems like they've got you know a lot invested in walk right so it's going to be something that's not going to be just one and done here's your war bands here's the abilities to use different armies in this is going to be you know it's going to be an ongoing thing which i kind of like to look at so three ways to play um, but before that we need to discuss where it is um, it's basically straight out of the box it's two war bands clashing to prove to the ever chosen they are worthy of joining their bands when you get your core book and you're, al and you're allowing um, the likes of the gloom spike gates and the night horn it's a different scenario again it's infiltrating to try and take out pieces of chaos or they're looking for artifacts which i think is really good that they haven't just kept it to chaos it's like yeah it's nice to see chaos got some love but then you've got if you've got your friends who are stormcast lovers or you've got your friends that are flesh eater courts or as i like to call them very old bretonians you can include everybody so I am loving it. I am absolutely loving it. So let's have a few examples of what we can do up on the screen. Right then guys, whether you are open, matched or narrative play, GW have included battlefield terrain cards. So straight out of the box when you get your starter set, two two war bands, you've got your chaotic beasts, which I absolutely love the look of. You have your terrain and you've got a whole deck of cards these decks of cards are going to be your battle plan your abilities and your terrain as well so you can set it up as the cards which is takes a whole heap of uh, bother off your shoulders and on top of that they've also stated that the board is going to be double sided so you're going to get a fair bit of use out of the starter set and the corpse rack mausoleum which is probably the Sigma right mausoleum just reboxed. Anyway, so you set it up as you want on the card. Some instances, whether it's like open play or narrative, there's going to be a team A, team B, objective one, objective two. But your bare bones is going to look like this, which is I like the look of because you know it keeps it simple. Because you have a lot to think about trying to control your war band. You've got possibilities of beasts turning up, and just anything can happen. So I'd rather I'd rather keep to the cards when it comes to the terrain. Or if I got ma mates, then who are also going to pick it up. Perhaps we can double up a board, double up terrain, and then you can just use two cards, and or do it yourself and make it how you want. Which I think is a fantastic idea and well done, GW. Right then guys, let's go on to the three ways to play now that I have bored you to death with terrain cards 
and my opinion of the box and the fact that I haven't even got it yet. So, open play. Open play is just a large game. I would believe it's going to be best that where you can have you tag team in each other two on two, or you can go all out. Because they've told us this is going to be two thing, two things. There's going to be the coalition of death and the triumph and treachery table. So you can either team up with your buddy, take on two other players in your gaming group, or you can just go all it all on all. It's just a it's a royal rumble, and who knows? Perhaps people are going to team up and take them out one by one. Anything goes when chaos is involved. So, as I alluded to, here's an example of a coalition of death scenario. So, as you can see, it gives you the scenario. Also tells you, as I like to call it, your frenemies and your enemy fighters, your war bands, the battle plan, the, the terrain, the deployment, and how you set it up. So, you know, it's not just a simple put everything on the table and go mad there's still a little bit of a tactics to it surprising for chaos it's not just a corn's way of uh, blood for the blood gods skulls for the skull throw so you know is you're going to make friends on the battlefield you're going to make enemies on the battlefield and it's going to be fun while you're doing it and then let's get another example up and that's going to be the triumph and treachery table so here we and here's the example of Triumph and Treachery, which we all know is going to be one on one, and it could be up to four players. So you've got priority orders, you've got your warbands, battle groups, terrain. So, so well, you can see, no matter what you do for your open play, it's well thought out. And it's just looking at this makes me so excited because it'd be fun to do open play now and again. I'm not saying that I'm the type of player I wouldn't do it because. No offence, if you see me with Blood Bowl, sometimes I just like to use straight out of the box and not having to think about uh, having to think about setting up a team. It's the same with the uh, it's the same with this. You would just go, I'm just gonna use bog standard what I got, all or nothing, which it's never a dull moment. It's always gonna be fun. So that's the end of uh, open play. Let's get on to match play. I know guys welcome to match play match play is where I think GW have put probably more effort in it's going to be a well thought out system because probably I haven't read the book as I've said but I'm guessing match play is probably where you're going to see uh, the tournament well you're definitely going to see the tournament in match play otherwise it's never going to work so you've got tournaments and you're also going to have a tournament guide in the book. So if you want to set up your own tournament for Warcry, it gives you the power to do it. But it's also a way I think the campaign system is going to come into its own because they've already said you can have from 3 to 16 uh, members of your warband. But it's the, the recommended warband is around about 1,000 points. So depending on what warband you want and if or if you just want grunts this is where you set start looking at it so you're going to have your battle plans you're going to have your terrain and if you can see on the see on the screen here's a battle plan one drawn and quartered so that looks like that a command the, ta the command the table and then sudden death it's going to be probably take out the, the uh, the leader of your war band so it's going to be it's going to be different scenarios for each team because you'll all have different objectives so like they've said um, the uh, some of the room marks that are on it you're going to be you won't be taking part in because uh, that's part of open play so you take them away to make it a bit of fairer system but um, you can have pitched battles and deployment cards which i've already said um and then you can as it, they've said on their site you can watch it grow from there so yeah this is where I, I like i said i think this is going to be the most thought out part of the book all right guys we're going on to narrative 
airplay which personally I think would it would go hand in hand really with uh, match play it's just match play you can just play it see your wins narrative you grow your war band which they've also stated GW when you check out the community page is part of the match play so there's the overlap there so if you want a big campaign where you want to see who's the best war band in your, in your gaming group who is going to be the chosen of the ever chosen to whether it's going to be to weaponize his armies and be their uh, war smiths like the iron golems or who's going to be their you know, going to be his savage hunters in the front of his war band and who's going to be his sneakiest get in the cipher loads it all all depends on who wins that campaign so by the sounds of it it's going to be a very immersive campaign where like just going off the um, chaos war bands you know have a choice of what you gonna get out of meeting meet engagements and stuff so they've given us the example of the cipher lords which um, they called it um, a spy in the house of talons so let me get that up on the screen in a minute so um, I've got an example of your spy in the house of talents which is a cipher lords uh, special campaign it's going to be where they get a spy in one of the largest cities in the Bloodwind Spoils, which is um, Karngrad. So, when you hit your hit these um, campaign mar markers, depending on the outcome, if Cypher Lords win, they've got a spy in there. The spy can grow, they grow their uh, influence in that area, perhaps uh, create a new cult. And that's where you can get your recruits and you can perhaps get uh, an extra warrior from Congrad and then it furthers your influence within the campaign which I think is really good that they've got these special interwoven missions with each other depending on outcomes and it doesn't seem to be just your basic you win this you you gain extra extra players you different outcomes within within the realm which I think is amazing so you know it's I can't wait to get my hands on the book so I can have a look at all these these scenarios in in depth and I'll probably do a video on it because I think that's amazing that they've given that much thought that they've interwoven it and especially with mass play as well so yeah I, I'm just in awe I don't know whether you can tell it over the video but I'm just in awe of what GW have done with Warcry and I haven't even gone outside the box yet. I've just basically told you what happened with the buck and a bit of terrain I have and I haven't even gone into the war bands and what the special specialties are I haven't said about the extra armies that are coming in um, but already it feels like there's going to be such a richness in this book and I can't wait. So, guys, are you looking forward to Warcry coming? Are you not bothered? Are you going to give it a look? Let me know because I'm going to be honest with you. I'm practically sitting at my front door waiting for that letterbox box to walk on. This is going to be phenomenal. And yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to get my hands on it and paint it up. Um, it's just fantastic. Right then, guys, if you made it this far into the video, thank you very much for watching and putting up with my jittery excitement. If I have missed something that you guys have seen and you want to share it, please let me know because in my next video, if I've missed something, I will bring it up and we can discuss it further. Talking about the next video, I'm either going to go over the campaign system or I might start doing a breakdown of the war bands. So, if you've got a preference, let me know. Um, or if you'd rather me cover something different concerning Warcry, please, that's what the comment section is there for. I want, I want to interact with you guys. I want to, you know, have our little community discussion. So, 
as I've said already. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of the channel. Um, and if you can, please share the video because um, YouTube have decided that I know I'm a small fish, but I I am not being part of um, the and shares with other videos. So way I was getting shared with other channels, like if you had it, you were watching a video for say, I don't know, you were watching a law video on AOS on another channel, I, I might have turned up in the search bar, search bar, but now YouTube have decided not, I'm not worth the ass to just don't, don't share off, off their own back. So if you feel I have done a good enough job to share, Please share this amongst your friends and hopefully more people will see it, more people will come into our noob community. Talking about that, we have a PayPal, a PayPal uh, link that's down below, we have Instagram, we have Twitter and we've got Teespring, the, the Teespring account. So if you're over on Teespring, check out some noob way and pff, I think that's the end of my shilling, that's the end of my shilling. So, until the next video guys, I shall see you again. Thank you for watching.